Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to First Baptist West Facebook Live, and we're coming to you live from the offices of First Baptist West and especially Elizabeth's desk. Man, it's good to see everybody uh, that we have on tonight. We have Susan and Martha and Will and Marie and, and several people, Linda and, and Leanne and Gary McDowell. All of you are tuned in, and we're appreciating that you're here with us tonight. Uh, we have a uh, something I want to share with you real quick. Of course, last week we had... Uh, Real difficulties with our uh, with our live stream. Of course, it was the, the web page and, and all the internet stuff that we had. But what I want to encourage you that if, if with live television, we never know what's going to happen. So if something were to happen that goes down, stay tuned. We'll get right back on as soon as we can. But if not, then uh, what we'll do is like John did last week. He took everything we kept recording. He took everything, condensed it into one program, and we put it back on our Facebook and YouTube page. So we want you to stick around and uh, just know that we're not professionals at this, as you can pretty well tell. But just remember, uh, we do the best we can. But it's good to have you tonight. We have a packed show. We have Patrick Sheeby will be on here in just a few minutes. Rusty Wisenhunt will come here. And Randy and John, they're going to be coming from the back side of the camera to the front tonight for just a little while. Uh, I beg them to come on and be a part of this show. Uh, but what we want to do first is I will welcome... Uh, to our show again, my sidekick, who has now started joining us, and this is uh, Kaylee Corson. Now, Kaylee, uh, it's good to have you on with us tonight, and uh, look forward to, although now I did want to blame Kaylee, because the minute she got on, we have not had any problems through about nine shows until Kaylee comes on and steals my show, and then, man, things go to pot. So It was working perfectly fine when I opened the show. <laughs> okay. It ended when you came back. <laughs> okay. Well, that, that's what you want to say. But it's good to have Kaylee on tonight, and she's going to be part uh, a part-time uh, sidekick here with us. So, Kaylee, how are you doing? Well, I'm doing good, but I would be a little bit better if... I was your co-host and not your sidekick. Co-host? Well, I think you have to kind of work up to that, don't you? Well, if I remember correctly, our conversation went a little differently when we talked about this. So, please, I need you to be on that show. It is so hard every Wednesday night. People are getting so tired of me. And they're, they want to see somebody new. Kaylee, you're so funny. You're so charming. You're, you're just so delightful. And people will just love you. And I just want people to watch it. Please, Kaylee, please, please, please be on my I show. I guess I can help you out. Oh, really? Yes. Really? Only if I'm your co-host. Co-host. I will call you co-host. I will never refer to you just as my sidekick, ever. You, you will be my co-host. It'll be the show with Harold Gacious and Kaylee Corris and whatever. Please, Kaylee, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's my pleasure. All right. Thank you. Hmm. You know, I, I don't quite remember it going that way. As a matter of fact, if, if I, I don't recall me even bringing it up. I think you caught on me after church one Sunday, and I think it actually was more like this. So, Harold, I have this idea. Okay. You've been doing the live stream for so long, right. and you should have a co-host. And I think a I would what? be perfect for the idea Wait, because uh -oh. I'm so funny. You, I, I should have a what? A co-host. A co-host? Yes. Why? Because, I mean, you've been doing it so long, it would take some weight off of you. And, I mean, I could help you out. I could ask you some questions. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure, Kaylee. Let me kind of think about maybe a way I could get you on. And please, maybe, please, 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 please. Okay, well, maybe as, as, as a sidekick, we'll, we'll see. Or, we'll see. Or a co-host. Yeah, we'll see. Please. Uh, okay. Please, we'll, we'll, please, 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 okay. please. Yes, yes, we'll, we'll do something. You can be on. Yes. All right. Okay, and I think that's a little more how it went, right? I, d I don't remember. You don't I think... remember it like that? No. Well, just no. to be honest with you, folks, that's, that's actually, actually how a little it closer. Went. How it <laughs> but anyway, Kaylee's on with us now, and, and, and it's, it's a lot of fun having her here, and she's going to add a new uh, dimension to what we have going on. As a matter of fact, uh, tonight you're going to introduce your first segment. And I'm going to turn it over to you and let you introduce your next segment. Our next segment do. is Ask the Pastor. Okay, right. now in order to do this, are, are you, since I'm going, I guess, going to be interviewed, do you need, are we switching seats? I think we should. Uh, why don't we just, okay. Yes. Just make sure they can hear you. 
<sighs> All right. I think I like that seat better. <laughs> All right. Okay. First question. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, Kaylee. How are you? I'm, I'm doing well now that okay. I'm in your chair. <laughs> Okay, so we only had a couple questions for you this week. Okay. Do you ever feel like you need to preach a sermon you have preached in the past? <laughs> wow, good question. Uh, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> there is a matter of fact times that I keep thinking, boy, I need to do that even sometimes a couple weeks in a row to, uh, because I think it's such a, a relevant message that some people have not heard. Uh, I think probably less now since we're doing live stream, mm -hmm. then I know more people are hearing it because sometimes in church you have a group that may show up on one Sunday and the group on the next Sunday. So mm -hmm. yeah, there, there's every now and then I think, boy, I'd, I'd like to preach that one again. Do you mix it up whenever you uh, kind of do a sermon again? I really try not to do them again. Okay. Um, I may use a text, but not necessarily do the same sermon. Mm -hmm. I, I try real hard not to do that. How similar or different are your two sermons given each Sunday? <laughs> Boy, I get I get sometimes in trouble over that one. Uh, my 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 topic is the same, my three or four points are the same, and my subpoints are the same. Sometimes mm -hmm. now where I get in is all that other stuff is sometimes different because you know I I joke and tell people whenever I start preaching I basically just lose my mind and start preaching. So I sometimes don't say the same things from one service to the next. As a matter of fact, I've been caught after a second service that I may have told a certain story or made a certain point and they were so ready for it because they talked about it in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden they're ready and then they don't hear that and they come up to me and say, wait, we heard <laughs> you were going to say this. And heard, I said, sorry. <laughs> so my, my main points are always the same. But sometimes the stuff I do in the middle, I, they're they're just completely different sometimes. So okay. that's a good question. Um, we also had a question. What is your third favorite reptile? My third favorite reptile? Your third favorite. I don't even know if I have a purse. <laughs> uh, not that, that, I know nowhere on that category would be a snake. Nowhere. Nowhere will be the snake. Uh, and anything that resembles a snake, that looks close to a snake, uh, a frog, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's okay. close enough. Okay, we'll go with the frog. All right. Okay. Um, do you have uh, like a Sunday morning kind of routine before you preach? Yes. I, I like coming in. I get here early and I come in and I look over uh, all my stuff. I... Then have a group of people that, that anybody wants to come. Uh, we usually meet at 745, uh, about 45 minutes before the service, and we have prayer time. Uh, then when they leave, then I go up, and I like to go through all my slides to make sure that they're all, all mm -hmm. ready. Um, and then we do sound check. But I do that pretty much every Sunday. See, I have, I have a routine that I like. I feel comfortable with. Okay. Yes. And then our last one, which is the most important question that okay. we received from my dear father. Okay. When are you going to stop torturing yourself and become a Green Bay Packer fan? <laughs> uh, never. <laughs> I can't. I can't betray my Cowboys. Sorry. So, okay. Sorry, John. I can't betray the Cowboys. It's okay. We'll keep praying for you. All right. <laughs> well, thank well, you. <laughs> well, that is all the questions that we have for today. Our next segment will be three things you need to know. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Kaylee, for asking those questions. All y'all that sent in a few questions, thank you for that. Uh, now, as we uh, move on, and, and did you notice how quick we made the, the change? That was, that was pretty good. Huh? <laughs> so I, I, I thought I was going to trip and break my neck, but we got over here, all right? So we have three things that you should know here at First Baptist West. The first thing is our M28 Ministries. Uh, as you know, that is continuing. And uh, this week, is they have changed it up, though. And we're now not doing it on Tuesdays, and they're not doing it six days a week. They only do it one day a week. <clears throat> That's on Saturday mornings. But what we do is this Saturday is 
our turn at First Baptist West. We're going to be feeding the people at the M28 Ministries there by the bridge at the Bridge House uh, this week. Now, so what I've done though is uh, to help us uh, encourage you to be a part of that and let you know a little more about what's going on. Is I've asked Patrick Shebe to come. Uh, Patrick has been serving uh, now, serving on the board. I guess yes. you, you mentioned it, and Patrick has really found a, a great spot there with ministry through the M28 Ministries, even when we were doing it on Tuesdays, uh, then we were able to do some uh, great things there. Uh, and Patrick, you were a big part of that. But now I also believe that you uh, did on Saturday, you started serving again on Saturday morning, right? Yes. Okay, so <clears throat> what I wanted you to do is come on and kind of give us an idea of what that's going to look like differently than what we've done in the past, even when we did the bridge ministry. Right. Uh, the the Tuesday where they were doing six days a week, that was pretty much limited to everybody would get there. We would prepare the food. We hand it out between uh, 11 and 1. Okay. And so that was the whole focus of it was just meeting the needs that they had for food. Now, we also incorporated a prayer ministry with that. It was totally voluntary. <clears throat> if they wanted the prayer, we'd ask each person as they were exiting can we pray for you? Can we pray for your family? And so that became a big part where after about a couple of weeks of doing that, probably about 90% of the people mm -hmm. were asking for prayer and letting us pray for them. Uh, they were ones that were actually going to, to different people and asking them to pray. And so I think God really blessed in that. And so that was where we were at. And then Jeff has been dealing with the last couple of weeks about the focus of the bridge ministry and believing that it needs to get more of a ministry oriented than it is a food oriented. Okay. You know, and again, feeding the people is, is was just a great ministry. Uh, I will tell you that it, it warmed my heart how receptive they were and how oh, okay. gracious they were about getting the food. And there's sometimes that we ran out of stuff, you know, and so they, they were okay with that. So, God really worked in that, but, but Jeff said, you know what, we need to, to basically get back to where we were before. So what we're going to have on Saturday will resemble a lot the way it was prior. Okay. It's yeah. Ministry. And okay. so at 9 <clears throat> and 15, we're going to open up the, the uh, clothes closet. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to get there around 8, 15 and set up there. And so people from 9, 15 to 10, 15 will be able to go by and get the clothes that they, okay. they want. And so then at, at uh, 10, 15, or actually at 10, at 10 o'clock, uh, they will then basically go into the gospel part where Jeff or somebody on his staff will preach. And while that's going on, there's about four or five guys that are on their board. They're across the street with the people and they're walking around seeing if there's any prayer needs they have or anything that they can minister to them. And then there's an altar call at the end. Okay. And that's what I really think is what is a great focus because the first couple times I'd seen it on Saturday, because they've been doing a Saturday ministry already, uh, preaching time, but it didn't have the uh, clothes closet. And so more and more people are actually coming forward and asking the men or women to pray for them. Okay. And so instead of us going to them and asking, they're actually coming forward. And I noticed that Jeff and John were ministering to a family of six for a considerable time. And so I think, you know, they saw some fruit in that. And so that's really what direction they're going. So in regard to that, you know, we just need to be more focused on and believing and, and, and trusting that God's going to work in that. And we're going to see people saved. Amen. All right. And that's what we're after. For yes. sure, anyway. Uh, then, of course, uh, we had the schedule up there, and then uh, after the worship service, what will they do then? Okay, after the worship service, then they will feed the people that are there. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how he's going to do this. He has talked about, you know, if they don't come to the worship service, you know, they probably won't get food. There are some families that they're allowing to take food with them, but most of the people are eating there right on the, on the property. And so that's what that's going on. So they're not feeding as many. Uh, you know, we were, we were getting 380 to, to or actually over 400 twice, but I, I think now we're probably back around 150 feet. Okay. And so that's what we're doing. At the same time, as they exit with the food, we opened up a pantry. And okay. so the pantry basically <clears throat> is giving them food that they can cook during the week okay. for themselves. 
Okay, good. Yeah. And, and then after after the meals and the pantry, then, of course, there to take everything and load it back up, right? That's correct. Okay. So you see, so folks, you see the schedule there. We, we're going to be starting at eight fifteen, and then we'll go till a little after noon. Is that right? Yeah. By the time we, you this, get it set up. This was the first Saturday we've done this, and we got done at five after after twelve. Okay, very good. Now, just real quick before you go, what um, what are what are we needing from First Baptist West for Saturday? The one thing we're needing is about three members. Of course, I'll be there at eight fifteen, but we need a couple of other guys that can help us unload the trailer. Okay. Uh, because the boxes are pretty heavy. And then, you know, even a lady can help us put the clothes up once we get all the boxes off. And we're hanging all the clothes on the fence line that circles the building. Okay. And so that's what we do. We just want to get that done by 9.15. Okay. So we'll need some people there to help us unload the, the trailer and hang up the clothes. And then uh, be there to, to be with the people and then start setting up. Now, we'll be bringing our food uh, but, but around 10 o'clock, I think, is what they were talking about, so we could serve by 11. So then we'll need people to help serve and, and right. all that. Right. Okay. Probably four to five people in the kitchen okay. is what we need to have on the inside. After the service is over, the service is over right about 11 o'clock, then the ones that are not serving in the kitchen, we're loading the box, the, the trailer back up. Okay. All right. Good. So this is our time on Saturday morning. So we want to encourage you to please help us out uh, and, and just come and be a part of that. Uh, I know Will and them are preparing the meals. Yes. They're going to be taking care of all that. So if you'd like to help out in any way, if you'd contact here at the church so that we could uh, know, and if uh, if you'd like to help provide uh, some of the bread and desserts, things like that, anything that we need, uh, please contact us as well. And so I know that this has become part of your heart. It really has. And, you know, I've enjoyed, you know, of course, I, I always enjoy serving with our people right. and the ladies that have showed up and did a good job. Even Ed Peterson showed up, you know, right. it was really good. But serving with the other churches has been a greater ministry than I thought it would be. Uh, Crossroads Church, First Baptist East, uh, Day Spring, because, you know, when it comes to ministry, it comes to actually, you know, sharing the gospel to, to people and providing what people need. We're all in this together. Amen. And so that's been a great blessing as well. Right. Well, very good. Well, Patrick, I, I appreciate you coming and sharing your heart with sure it because I, I I can talk about it, but for to hear have somebody come in and actually has you've done it and that's your heart now. Right. Uh, and that's a great promotion for our church to get involved. And our church has done a great job Absolutely. throughout this time, but now it's time to continue. We don't want to stop now. Even that's though, correct. And it's a good sign that less people are needing it. But the sign is that people are still needing it. And right. so we're going to reach people. One, one thing Jeff did this last Saturday, he challenged the people that were on the hill, about 25 of them, uh, and then five showed up a little bit later, to go back in their neighborhoods, to go back to the, to the RV park, to go back to the apartment complexes, invite <laughs> their neighbors to come this week. Right. And so Jeff really believes we'll have over double this week. Okay. And that'd good. be just a great blessing if it happens. Amen. Amen. And that's kind of what we need to be doing at the church. Yes. Going out and inviting people that come in and see it. So, all right. Well, Patrick, thank you so much for uh, being a part of that and, and helping us and be encouragement to it and uh, keep us involved and keep us up on what we need and we'll, we'll continue to do it. Sure. All right. Well, thank well, you. Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate that. So that was the first thing that, that you should know about First Baptist uh, here at First Baptist West, the M28 Ministries, and we want to be a part of that. Number two, start back. Man, I tell you, we, we are, we are we're open, we're excited about that, and so we're looking forward to what God is going to be able to do. We, we, from our first Sunday to our second Sunday, we almost doubled in the number of people that were attending our services, and man, that was really thrilling, and, and we're excited about that. But what I want to do is to encourage you to keep coming. And if you haven't been yet, uh, come on. We do spatial distancing. Uh, we, we're greeting people. We're trying to make sure everyone is, is well taken care of in this whole thing. Uh, but also want to remind you that uh, on the 21st, that's not this coming Sunday, but a week from Sunday, we're going to be opening up our preschool and our nursery. <coughs> JC. <coughs> Excuse me, JC has been doing a good job of putting that together. So we're going to open that up. But now what we're going to do is it's only going to be for uh, one time, one service at 1045. We'll be having our preschool 
and our nursery open. Uh, you'll have to come in and register uh, your, your, your kids and they'll have to be uh, temperature checked and all that before they can go to the back because we're still going to be taking care of, of the people as much as we can. So that'll be at 1045. So we want you to know we're excited. Man, it's been fun having a, a live audience again and God's Spirit's moving. It's been a lot of fun. So that's number two. Number three is at the end of the month, we're going to be having Celebrate Freedom. Now, as you know, over the last couple of years, we've had a big blowout event with uh, a big service. We've had uh, food. Uh, we've had a Corvette car show and all that. Well, because of the restrictions, we're not going to be able to do that. But we are still going to be celebrating our freedom because we never want to forget that. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to have a scaled down version of that, but we're going to be doing it during both of our services, again, to make sure that we get, can get everybody in and still have some spatial distancing. So I want to encourage you to come and be a part of that. Now, one thing that we're needing is that if you are uh, military or you have served in the military, we do what we call our military roll call. It's a video roll call where we show pictures of all the people who uh, from our church or are connected to our church that either are now serving or have served. If you could uh, want to be on that, we want to make sure that we honor every person. So what we're asking you is if you have not been on our roll call before and you're new to our church, we have some information that we need from you. So if you will call our church here uh, anytime throughout the next couple of weeks and Linda has some information that she needs to get from you because we want to celebrate and honor you for serving in our military. So thank you for that. But that's going to be uh, at the end of the month. And what what date is that? Somebody help me out here with the date. It's the 28th. 20, 28th. All right. Thank you. It's the 28th. <laughs> Uh, on both of those services. So we're going to have a Celebrate Freedom on that. So we're excited about that. So as we get ready to go, uh, Rusty Wisenhunt is going to be joining us here in just a few seconds. And so uh, we appreciate him coming in. Uh, but those are the three things that you should know about First Baptist West. So uh, we hope you'll be continuing to be a part of everything that we have going on. So I want to step into uh, our next uh, guest coming in here, and his name is Rusty Wisenhunt. Many of you know Rusty, and uh, Rusty is a uh, very important part of our church, and uh, I'm honored to have him here and being a part of what we have going on and what we have happening here at our church. Now, Rusty, uh, I want to thank you for coming and being a part of our service today, or part of our program tonight. Glad to be here. Oh, well, and, and you were you were about the quickest one to respond to saying, yeah, I'll be there. Everybody's going, well, I don't know, but, but you're here. So now Rusty has, has a lot of jobs here at our church. Uh, first of all, you're, you're a Sunday school small group leader. Yes. Okay. Yes. You're also our Sunday school superintendent. Yeah. Uh, you're also now an, you're an engineer at the city of Lawton. Director of Direct Public Utilities. Yes, that, that was, which is a whole lot of stuff. A whole lot, a whole lot. And on top of all that, you're a husband, a dad, uh, a grandfather. And yes. So what do you do in your spare time? I try to sleep, but okay. it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> okay. Well, again, you do so much for our church. And here in just a little bit, I want to talk about a little bit more that you've yeah. been doing that most people don't know that you do. They know you do some of this other stuff, yeah. but you do uh, quite a bit of other stuff. So how are you doing? Doing well. I just want to see the cheese head. That that would be all right to see the cheese head. <laughs> John, it's not happening. Don't bring me one. <laughs> he told me out there before that he could get me a cheese head. Yeah. So we're not going to do that. Katie, if y'all if y'all could see Katie, we'd get her in here. Katie's <laughs> excited about that. She, it thrills her to think that she could actually see me in a cheese head. I'll get it for you for your birthday. When Katie wears the Dallas Cowboy jersey, I might. We'll it see. might burn a little. Yeah, it, it, uh, right. I, I would settle for an OSU shirt. So, uh. <laughs> oh, y'all's killing me! You're killing me. So, how, just real quick, how are things at work with all this COVID stuff? It's it's been it's been an interesting time uh, with the with the city of Lawton. Uh, you know, going through it. Everybody, we continued to work mm -hmm. twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, right. and and uh, uh, had to set up plans in case in case things have turn turn much worse than than what, what happened, but uh, be prepared because uh, being in my, my area of water and wastewater is that, that can't stop working. No matter right. if everybody gets sick, that's, that's when you really need that kind of stuff. Exactly. So, so uh, but it's a, uh, it was a, uh, everybody came to work, showed up for work, not an issue with that. And, 
and more than willing to do their job. Good, good. Yeah. Well, one thing about your position and, and the guys that, that work with you and under you is that we don't ever really pay a lot of attention to what you do until we need you. If we do our job right, you don't even know we're out that's there. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So so we're excited about, about yeah. you doing that, but I'm sure that's a full, full-time full job. Yes. Yes. Uh, you it know, it is. You to keep it that is. going. Well, good. So we're honored, though, that you're a part of our First Baptist West because uh, one of the things is that, that I mentioned that you are also uh, our, one of our Sunday school small group leaders. So uh, about two months now, we've been doing the Zoom classes. Yes, yes. Uh, how has how, that been going for you? Well, it's been really interesting. It's uh, I remember the first the first class. Everybody was a little hesitant whether they were going to talk or anything. Had had a good turn. Mm-hmm. I really wasn't sure. I teach a uh, an adult couples class, a three C, which is is a, a, a more senior adult class, and I really wasn't sure how how they were going to respond. But I've actually had more attending through Zoom than I had actually attending in class. Really? Okay. And, and we've had people attending Sunday school from Texas and India. Oh, there you the, go. Uh, Julianne George uh, zoomed right. in uh, uh, to, uh, from India and, and right. everything to our Sunday school class. So we've had, and we've been running 15, 16 people on, uh, in, uh, through our Zoom Sunday school. So okay. Uh, so I was going to ask, what's one of the advantages you have? And that's one of them yeah, right it, it, it's, uh, and. And we've had some some others from from other classes that weren't meeting through Zoom. We've had okay. uh, a few join in that way too. So. Okay. So how how are the people responding as far as now uh, participating, not just being there, but actually participating with it? They're participating very well. Uh, it's uh, I, w- I I really wasn't sure how the participation was going to be, but uh, it's a. Uh, Everyone participates very well in, in the class. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, my class, they, they never were bashful about speaking their, their, <laughs> their, their, their thoughts. And even on, 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 through technology, they're still not bashful about sp- speaking their minds. Oh, that's good. Because a lot of times people will talk in a group, but when I mean, you put a microphone or a camera, yeah, yeah. and unless your name's Kaylee Corson, <laughs> you kind of freeze up. Kaylee kind of shines <laughs> the minute that it happens, right, Kaylee? Yes. Yeah. Kaylee kind of thrives on that stuff. So, yeah, that's real exciting. So, uh, so we have some good positive. Have, have you seen something, any negatives that we might have had? Well, the technology, the challenge of technology yeah. is uh, one week uh, there was an update on Zoom, and if you didn't update, you couldn't hear each other. Right. So, so through the phone, we, we coordinated with everybody, had them update their, their app and, and everything. Got three-fourths of the class logged in. Okay. But it, it took about... 20 minutes to get everybody finally in that, that one Sunday. But. Well, well how, do you, how do you see with the positives and the negatives, how do you see uh, the technology going along with you from this point on when we well, are able to get some things going what, again? What, what we, and the class was real interested is they like people being able to remote in, uh-huh. and they, but they still want to get together. And right. it would be real great to have a camera, a large screen TV and still be able to zoom in a, a te- through technology uh-huh. and have everybody that wants to come in person. And that, that really opens the door to some ministries for the Sunday school mm-hmm. because people that may, for some reason can't may come to class, but they can, can remote in. And right. I think that is an opportunity that we really never envisioned that this is brought forward that, uh, we can accomplish right well so do you see that something as a vision moving forward yes, for our I, Sunday school? I think partners? I think that can really expand our Sunday school ministry okay so as Sunday school superintendent then I'm, I'm assuming that's something that you're yes. going to begin to yes. pray so we're, and we're, on. We're, we're we're already starting to talk about what what we need to do and and you know just a laptop sitting there it may be and not enough but hooking it to a to a to a big screen TV and and then a laptop has a camera that you can pick up the people on, uh, and they, everybody can see projecting and communication. I we're gonna we're gonna start trying to to pilot it, basically uh-huh. trying to work it okay. to see if we can make it work. Oh, that's exciting. Well, as a matter of fact, here in just a little bit, your son-in-law is going to be on, and John here in a minute. Yeah. They're going to talk about the technological side of, yeah. of all this, and so we'll see. We'll, we'll put them to, to good use then. 
Yes. Okay. That, that, Michael Mark. Michael there you Mark. Go. Well, and, and, and with him being son-in-law, what's he going to tell you? No. No. <laughs> yeah. No. He's going. To, he's going to help you out, right? That's right. That's right. right. <laughs> so, so you see, it's progressing along that yes, way. Yes. All right. And I'm real excited yes. about the potential that we have for that. Um, one other thing that, that you you also have, we've talked about, and you you've always headed this up was our prayer ministry. Yes. Uh, we talked a little bit uh, a couple of weeks ago, yes, I believe yes. it was, about we. this time and during the summer we always have, and you always did it even throughout the year, yes. that at 6 o'clock you would meet with a group of people yeah. and begin to pray for our church and yes. pray for the needs of people yes. and, and, and stuff. All right, and then normally on Wednesday nights that's what we've done until the COVID yes. stuff has hit. So what, what do you envision with us being able to keep that prayer ministry going, even though we may not be meeting for Bible studies and stuff on Wednesday nights? Well, and and the a lot of the people who came for prayer meeting, they came just for the prayer meeting. Right. And and so I think here we with the the being able to come and meet together and be able to maintain distancing, we have rooms big enough to yes. do that with. Yes. And I think uh, here very soon we will be able to transition back into having that Wednesday night prayer meeting, uh, okay. and 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 being able to do that, and those who want to come and, and maybe that's a way we could actually people who want to uh, remote in some way they could call in, set up a laptop, call in through Zoom, okay. and, and 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 voice some prayer concerns and okay. stuff, and Good. and that opens the. I think technology, there's several, so many ways we can go with our technology that it can actually help people to remote in to, right. to that activity. Okay. Well, that's something then that we'll, we'll be announcing hopefully in the next couple of yes. weeks about how we can get our prayer ministry yeah. back up. And, yes. and I'm excited about that. Well, one last thing before you go. Uh, Rusty wasn't sure that I was going to be, didn't know I'm going to be talking about this, but there's also a, a, a thing that we do called the Unsung Heroes and uh, where we introduce and talk to people about some things that they're involved in that people don't know. Well, one of the things, and Rusty I know is not real comfortable with me talking about this, but uh, one of the things that I wanted to, to really thank you for publicly, because I do it to you all the time, but I want to publicly uh, thank you. Rusty works extremely hard in, in remodeling our church. He's kind of headed up a lot of projects. As a matter of fact, you just finished uh, the, pre, the pre texturing, painting, texturing, the preschool area. Right. And and, and he headed that all up. And so, uh, man, I want to thank you for that. And I know a lot of people don't realize that you've been doing it. And that's not the only thing you've done. I mean, you kind of head up everything that we've done in the reconstruction of our building. We, we you know, uh, the, the new part of the building, uh, about five years now. Uh -huh. And, and, uh, and a big praise is is that number seeing that number there's like I, I, that, that right there <laughs> seeing that number roll down under that million dollars that Amen. that was great to see that but you know we've gone through a, a large part of the the old part of the and retextured repainted yes. updated new doors uh, remodeled bathrooms new tile and everything and there's a lot a, a new flooring in in a lot of areas a lot of people have put a lot of effort into it and right. and uh what, what was great about it, we did it without borrowing or uh, we, with just money we had available. Absolutely, and, right. And, uh, and uh, made the, the old part of the building looks pretty much like the new part Amen. of the building. Yeah. So unless you knew, you wouldn't tell. You couldn't tell. Right, and stuff, right. So. And that's what, I, and, and again, thank you. I know you don't want all the credit, but I thank you for heading all that up mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of this uh, on Saturday mornings when I come up and do my my study my wrapping things up just you talked about a ritual that I do for before a sermon Saturday mornings is something else I pull up and either you're here or you pull in shortly after I do yeah. and so thank you Russ for all the work that you do for us I use a lot of that as stress relief for from the city of Lawton <laughs> yeah, there you go. doing physical instead of the mental drain so. there you go there you go well thank you so much for everything that you yes. do uh, do you mind if I pray over you real quick That'd and, then, be fine. and I, again thank you for coming being a part of our program tonight okay. uh, and, and all that you do for us <laughs> father in Jesus name we come to you and we thank you for Russ we thank you for all the things that he does and Lord, that he, he loves you and he loves this church. And Lord, he, he helps take care of the physical parts of our building. And God, we thank you for that. But also for him leading out in his small group. And Lord, just uh, also leading out in our Sunday school, the whole entire Sunday school department. 
So, Father, I just pray blessings for him, for his family, and that, God, you would continue to show favor on him in all that he does. And, Father, we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, Rusty. Well, before before we end the show with uh, with another uh, couple of people that we're going to have on, we want to uh, go right in now to a commercial that, that probably is familiar to some of you as we get ready to promote our Sunday school. But then we're going to go into a commercial break and go right into our Bible study. So we hope you'll stick around for that. Well, we've got to get ready because we're going to sing this in just a few minutes. So turn to page five, and we're going to start right now. Hey, folks, we'll get right back to our program here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to get into what I basically believe is my favorite time of the evening on our Wednesday night Facebook Live. And that's for me to be able to take some time and uh, teach out of the Word of God. And what I wanted to bring up tonight is that in, in our society over the last couple of years, and especially in the last uh, several months, we have seen lots of views and opinions and commentaries being thrown around to everybody. Some of them are good. Some of them are not so good. Some of them are, are right on, and some of them have been skewed. As a matter of fact, I talked uh, Sunday, if you remember, about how sometimes the things that we hear, sometimes that we think are being skewed uh, by outside sources. So tonight, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take just a few moments and talk to you about two areas that we can uh, have pressure to listen to. If we're not careful, we can be pressured, and and sometimes through the pressure, we can make the wrong decisions or find out that we've followed the wrong voice. In Luke chapter 23, starting at verse 22 and 23, this is where Pilate has Jesus, and, and he's arrested Jesus, and now he's standing before the mass of people who are yelling, crucify him, crucify him, and Pilate is, is, is talking to them, and listen to what he says in verse 22. Then he said to them, Pilate, said to them the third time, Why? What evil has, has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they, the people, the masses were insistent, demanding with a loud voice that he be crucified. And the voices of these men and the chief priests prevailed. So if we're not careful, we, we can sometimes be pressured by the masses that sometimes the large outcry, the screaming and, and, and the yelling and the demanding can, can overtake us. And as a matter of fact, we see here that Pilate basically was pressured and went against his own summa, summation and conviction. He, he told them, I see nothing that he's done that merits this. 
But they began to cry out, as the Bible says, crucify him, crucify him. And sometimes the pressure from the masses overtakes us. And, and some of the, if you will, the heart, most heartbreaking words that I see in this text is after Pilate pleaded with them, he said that I have found nothing wrong with him, but they were insistent, demanding on the loud voices, and he and yelled, crucify. And the voices of these men, now listen, the voices of these men and the chief priests prevailed. This was pressure from the mass, and it was too great. And as a result, Pilate had an opportunity to do something right, but he chose to do something wrong. He chose to follow the loudest voices. And my friend, sometimes the loudest voices are not always the right voices to listen to. So there's the first area of pressure that if we're not careful, especially in our day and time, especially over the last couple of years, especially with social media and everything that's going on, we can sometimes get so wrapped up and pressured into following voices that sometimes aren't the right voices to follow. But then there's the second group that I want to talk about. And so in case you're thinking, well, he, he, he's talking against, you know, groups of people. No, I want, now I want to look at the second pressure point. And that's sometimes pressure from spiritual leadership. In 1 Kings chapter 13, and I read this in my devotion even this morning, there was a prophet who was called of God to go to, to Israel, go to the king, and talk to him about three things and, and do three things that God told him to do. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to the king, and I want you to prophesy against his evilness. The second thing I want you to do is I want you to not eat or drink anything while you're there. And the third thing is I want you then, after you've prophesied, I want you to leave a different direction than when you came. Don't go back the same way. So this prophet came and he stood before the king of Israel and he, he told him that God had now judged him for the actions that he was doing. And so what he was able to do then was to leave out and go. And at that point, he had done everything that God told him to do, all three of them. And he did everything right until we see in the rest of the story there in 1 Kings chapter 13, an older prophet heard of what the, had this younger prophet had done and that this prophet had left. So the older prophet went after him and, and got up to him. And when he found him, the Bible says this older, the younger prophet was, was tired and weak and was famished because he had been walking and he hadn't eaten or drank anything. And so this older prophet came and told him, he said, God told me to tell you to come back into town and have something to eat. But we realized then that the older prophet had lied, or at least he had been hearing the voice of an angel of darkness to come and go find this prophet. Now, this prophet who had done everything that God wanted him to do up to this point was lied to by another prophet because maybe he had respect for him, maybe he was an authority. But this older prophet told him a deception. The younger prophet followed him and went back into town and did exactly what God told him not to do. And then we see that judgment came. So my friends, we, we have to be really careful who it is that we're listening to because sometimes we, we get pressured by the masses, but sometimes we even get pressured by some religious leaders who maybe aren't, aren't rightly dividing the word of truth to us. So who do we listen to? How do we know what to do in these crazy, tumultuous times? What the Bible tells us to do in John 14, 9 says, test the spirit. Test the voices to find out, are they really right? Are they on the right track or are they deceiving? Are they skewing the, the view of it in order to get us to follow along something that we shouldn't be following? So what you hear Someone saying it needs to match what the Word of God says. If it doesn't, then they're just a voice crying out something that's not true, leading us in a wrong direction. That's why even as the pastor here at First Baptist West, every time I preach, I have no problems. And I encourage every person to take the things that I say and don't follow them just because I said it. But I encourage you every time to take what I've said, take it home, take it back into the Word of God and make sure 
that what I've said was absolutely true. Because I don't want to be a voice that leads someone in the wrong direction. That's how we test the Spirit. Sometimes we hear something that might sound even good to our own minds. But when we weigh them against the Word of God, we find out that it's in complete contradiction to what the Bible tells us. A pastor or a large group does not have the market cornered on spiritual leadership. Every individual, and I believe in priesthood of the believer, every individual can hear from God speaking to them directly through the Holy Spirit. But everything that you hear from the Word of God through the Holy Spirit will match the Bible. So my friend, in all this noise, in all this craziness, who do we listen to? We listen to the Holy Spirit speaking truth to us that matches the Word of God. And when we can do that, we're going to go in the right direction. That's why he tells us, seek Him first. Lean not unto our own understanding even, but in all our ways acknowledge Him and He will direct our paths through His Spirit. So my friend, let me encourage you today, right here, right now, seek God's truth. Seek it for yourself from His Word and make sure that what you're hearing out there, whether it be from the masses or even spiritual leaders, make sure it matches the Word of God. And if it does, now you're on the right path. Hey, thank you for giving me some time tonight. Uh, This again, I, I enjoy this part of our evening and I'm looking forward to you the rest of our program and hope you'll enjoy it. But before we do, let me say a quick word of prayer and then we'll close out. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for your voice. And Father, the Bible tells us that that we are your sheep and the sheep will hear your voice and recognize your voice. And that voice now comes to us through the Holy Spirit and from your word. And Father, you will never contradict yourselves in any way. So I pray that everyone listening tonight will now even take what I've said and not take it just because I've said it. But God, they could match it with your word and hear your voice in it. Father, thank you for this program tonight. We continue on with it. We pray that we're glorifying you with it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get back to our program. All right, well, welcome back. And I hope that uh, you enjoyed the, the Bible study and uh, that God's Word can penetrate into your heart and life. As you see, we're joined now by more uh, people, and we're excited to have uh, Randy and John are, are onto our program. And they scooted Kaylee almost out of the picture, but she keeps working her way back in. That's why I think she's not ever going to be out of the picture. But guys, <laughs> thank you all for coming and being a part of our show. Thank you for having us. Uh, yeah, Randy didn't mean that. He didn't really mean that. He, he didn't <laughs> yeah, want to be here. I but didn't know. <laughs> but the, the, they, these guys have come from behind the, the scenes to the front of the scenes. Welcome to the front. Thanks. Randy. Yeah. All right. So, Randy, I, I just want to visit with you quickly. You guys both, you and John, are really uh, the key to everything that we do through the electronic stuff, through the live streams, through this program. I mean, this is all basically you guys. So you work at Walmart in the electronic department, right? Yes. Okay, now I want to ask you, how have things been at Walmart since this COVID thing struck and churches were uh, kind of clamoring for electronic stuff? It has been crazy. Crazy. People buying all of our stock, like all of our TVs, all of our computers, laptops, basically just stuck at home, nothing to do. That's what you buy. That's right. (laughs) And so churches have been buying stuff too, and but homes have been really getting stuff for their kids and it's just stuff to do, right? Pretty much to keep their kids entertained. Right, right. So have you been working quite a bit down there and things really crazy? Yes. Um, right now I think they're kind of lowering the restrictions. I mean, uh-huh. they're, they're still counting, to my knowledge, the number of people in the store, but it's it's more laxed. I don't think they've reached the number that they're maxed out at right oh, now. Okay. All right. Well, good. good. So, well, guys, I, I want you to know I appreciate you guys all that you do for putting all this together because it it looks easy, but I'm, I'm I watch y'all behind the scenes and it's not. So, uh, what 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 what, did, what kind of got y'all interested in doing the video stuff for us? 
other than me to come and say, hey, guys, I need you to do this. Well, that's mainly it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I never would have imagined that I, I'd have to, you know, I'd be involved in something like this. Right. I always you told know? you, yeah. I always tell John, I said, the things that he's doing extra, those were in the fine print. Yeah. He, he didn't read it. He didn't read your contract too well, did he? I just signed it. Yeah, there you go. He just, yeah. his job description, I don't care. <laughs> it, it pays. It pays. Yeah, that's all I so, need to read there. <laughs> so, uh, you guys have really been instrumental in getting our live stream services up, um, getting us, uh, even with our sound, uh, getting these programs together. Uh, when we first started, Randy, you, the, the, the commercial that we showed just a few minutes ago, you you developed that. You kind of let it out in, in those that yes. we've been doing for Sun School. Yeah. How far have we come? Pretty far, yeah, <laughs> I'd have to say. So when, when you did those before, how did how did you record? Basically with my, cam my personal camera, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, and then I just edited them down and that's pretty much it. Okay. So now, John, what, what are, what's all involved in getting a live stream service going out? Uh, live stream really requires a laptop and a camera. That's really uh -huh. it. So um, we just take whatever the camera sees, and then we put it on the computer, and then we just send that out. Okay. Um, but um, one of the things that we were really uh, re we were really blessed to have was Jeremy Wellborn, uh -huh. and he, yes. and his involvement in the uh, audio. Uh, aspect of that because neither Randy or myself are really skilled yeah, in the. Uh, we're good uh, at video, audio. but yeah. audio different story. Yeah, um, I don't have an ear for it, and so um, it was really beneficial to have him come because the the audio sounds better than ever. Right. We can hear everyone singing all the instruments, and then you sound more crisp than ever in the in the pulpit in the. Uh, right. in the uh, yeah. <laughs> you sound better, Harold. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, y'all remember what I've always told them. I've always told them their most important job is to make me look and sound better than I actually do. So uh, I think you're failing on the look. I, I, I still look the same as, you know, you guys need to narrow me down just a little bit. But uh, so you guys uh, do all that. But now that takes a, uh, a lot of intellect. I mean, as far as knowing you've had to learn a lot, right, to be able to put that out. Yeah. At first, it's, it's always learning. You always learn new things. New technology comes out. Um, that's just it. It's it's really about the need. I feel like mm -hmm. like I, I'm I know for a fact that anyone can do this because if I can do it, anyone can do it. It's just that you just haven't been exposed to technology, right? So like right. Uh, uh, you as the pastor, you're you're more involved in in the scripture aspect of it, in the theological aspect of it, in ways that Randy or I can po possibly comprehend. Right, and that comes from a from a need. Right. And so in, in the same way, uh, I've always been really into technology and Randy has always been into technology. And so it's really just a culmination of what we've done. Right. But I don't think it's a it's an intellect thing. It's just, you know, what are you used to? Right. Right. And I definitely am not used to uh, <laughs> this as I can barely get my Carrie has to set up my phone for me just about every every <coughs> Wednesday night so I can even watch this. But uh, uh, so what, what are some. Uh, goals that you guys now, as you, as we're moving along, we're progressing. And Rand, uh, Rusty talked a little bit about some stuff for Sunday school. What are some of the goals that you see for our church that we could aim at from this point? Um, I think it just comes to improving the quality. Okay. And so, right. you know, when we started, the quality was in no means bad. But if we take it and compare it to what we're doing now, right. you know, it's it's miles ahead. Right, and so I, I think it's just really about baby steps, uh, making a little tweak here, making a little adjustment there, um, and um, you know the, the most important thing is making sure that people have the the most, uh, the best interactive worship experience they can from a right. TV screen. Right, you know we right. want to present this as if they were here in person. We want them to be able to worship as if they were sitting in the in the chairs in the sanctuary, and we want them to be able to hear the word like you know they were in the front seat mm -hmm. hearing you preach. Right. Okay. Well, go ahead. I would have loved to have this whenever I was in the hospital. I was in the oh, hospital right. for that nine week period. That would have been a good blessing to to have to be able to still connect with the church. Right. And you know, I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. So, Very yeah, good. People that you know are, are not capable of being here can actually still be involved and still comment and they right. still have their their voice heard and stuff and. So in that aspect, it's a, it's a good thing. Well, the, I, I, I do. Oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. sorry. One of the dangers that we that we have with uh, with streaming and and uh, broadcasting everything is we focus on the views. 
focus on numbers, like how many people have seen the video, how many people were in service, uh, when in reality, it's really about reaching that one person that really right. needed to see it. You know? That one person, uh, like Randy mentioned, that can't be at the church, that want to be there, but can't physically make it, and, and that's what the live stream is there for. You know, it was really exciting when we first started our live stream long before the COVID mm -hmm. struck. Uh, even the first Sunday, the, on the Monday that I came into the office, one of our senior adults had come in and hadn't been feeling well, mm -hmm. uh, but said thank you because I wouldn't have been able to be in church, but because you guys did that, man, I was able to be in church. We even had a, a, a husband and wife who he became very ill and couldn't come. And she told me later how much it meant for them to be able to sit together in their house mm -hmm. and sing the songs that we were singing and to hear the message and actually be in church when he couldn't even get out of a chair anymore. Awesome. So guys, I, I want you to know that this is not just something fancy we're doing. And I, I love your heart. Because we're there to reach people. Uh, we're not there to put on a show or a production. We're there to allow people to worship with us. Now, real quick, what are what are some of the needs that you see that we have going forward with this? What are and it's uh, it can be technology, could be people. What are some needs that you see that we really do need to start looking at? No, you kind of list that off the big two right there. Okay. Um, like I said, it's a uh, it's. It's a steep learning curve, but once you get over that hump, everything's really easy because it kind of builds on itself. So volunteers um, would really help yeah. out because what that would do is, you know, kind of give us an opportunity to, to handle other things as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it wouldn't be like a every week, even an every month thing. It's mm -hmm. just like in case of emergencies, we would need right. people to, to help out. Um, and technology wise, uh, you know, right now we're operating on a, on a, on a, a camcorder and and Randy's phone right. and he's done such a great job with it you can't even tell the difference most of the time right but if we had an extra camera then we would be able to make smoother transitions nicer cuts better angles right um, and just kind of overall improve the quality of it as well as um you know another computer because the one we have in the in the sanctuary right now is my old one and that's dying still and right you know and uh, the other Sunday Randy was freaking out because uh, yeah my my uh, my LCD my display is kind of the connections loosened with my laptop and so all of a sudden it starts going hazy and you know and, and so he started worrying like hey is the is the power right? gonna, is the pro presenter going to cut out but, right uh, but yeah those are the those are the big ones that we would uh, you know okay. we would we would love to be able to kind of improve on okay well, I know you guys had developed the two camera system when we first started. It was just the one mm -hmm. and zooming in and trying to get different things. It was, but then y'all went to the two camera and like you said, it was your phone mm -hmm. basically. So you're doing a great job with that. And, and that does give you ability to transition from one thing to the next a little bit easier. So yes. uh, you guys are doing a great job now. So if someone wanted to help and they say, look, I know nothing about it. Does that restrict them from helping and learn this? No, just come see us. Just yeah. come back there and just... Yeah, just it, it's really just kind of watching what we do and then just, you know, replicating. You don't have to really understand, you know, how it works, but rather kind of like this is, you know, this is what you do. Okay. I mean, just yeah. simple things like, like running the camera. Right. Just having somebody there to run the camera, that'd be tremendous help. Well, I know uh, a couple of Sundays uh, ago, uh, Billy was gone and John had to <laughs> play the drums for us in our services. So I remember one time looking back to the back and uh, Randy, <laughs> Randy's back there, I've seen you moving all over the place trying to mm -hmm. cover the ground that was needed to be covered that you would have normally helped him with. Mm -hmm. And so I got to thinking right then that you know, we do need a few other people to help because sometimes uh, one of you have to be doing something else. Yeah. So. And so it's really just the um, the main help that we need is the PowerPoint, the the, the slides, right? Um, getting the words on there because that's the that's the e simpler one, that's the easier one to get a grasp of, because both Randy and I can operate the the camera and the live stream, so we can alternate. That's not an issue. <coughs> right. If we had someone on the um, on the slides, that would help out a lot. Okay. Well, good. So uh, just let us know uh, if you're interested in helping these guys. Again, they'll they'll train you. They'll give you the the simple stuff of it. Uh, they'll they'll handle the heavy technology, but uh, we do need more help. So if you want to help these guys in any way and be a part of our production and the media team, uh, just just let us let us know, and these guys will hook you up real quick. So guys, again, thank you because you've opened up because of your willingness to learn and your willingness to do. You've opened up a whole new ministry for First Baptist West. And man, I, I thank y'all for it. And it, it's been fun. And even doing this program, uh, this was John's brainchild. And 
I'm usually the idea guy, but he was this time. But you guys, thank you for everything that you're doing and how uh, how you surrender yourself over to it. So uh, just thank you. Uh, I can't say enough. And we're looking forward to seeing some other things that are going on. Katie, uh, what do you have? Anything else that you want to mention? Um, I don't think I have anything. She's speechless. Yep. She's speechless. <laughs> wow. I think we did something amazing. No, <laughs> but it's great having Kaylee as a, as my sidekick. Co-host. Okay, that's what I was waiting on. Uh, having her here, so she'll be joining us every week, uh, having some special segments that we're going to be doing, and so it's it's an exciting time. We want to remind you this Saturday morning uh, to help us with the M28 Ministries at the Bridge House, uh, starting there about 8.15 if you can make it. Uh, but Patrick wanted me to mention to you that if by some chance you can't make it, but you still want to be a part. One of the things that they really want people to do is to pray. During the time, uh, anytime throughout that whole area of service over there, if you would pray for God's Spirit to move, that's one thing that he asked me to mention to you again, to pray, pray, pray for everything that's going on. So if you can't actually physically be there, pray for those that are. But if you can, please join us Saturday, and we're going to have a great time over there. Also, uh, remember, uh, 8.30 for our Sunday morning service and at 1045. If you can't make it, join us through uh, our live stream service. Uh, also our Sunday school with our Zoom conferences. Go to uh, our webpage and you'll be able to see the, the times and the locations for all of those. Uh, then again, join us again next Wednesday night here for Facebook Live. It's been a great evening. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we hope that uh, you'll have a great evening. God bless you. And we'll be seeing you soon. Yeah, All right. All right. Very good. All right. Good night, everybody. Katie, good night. Good night.